Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here. In this tutorial, we're gonna check out a technique for creating a perfect spiral in Photoshop. Then we'll apply it to create this hidden text effect. Finally, we're gonna take it a step further. We're gonna animate it as a looping graphic, all in Photoshop. It's a nice, simple animation. In fact, it's a good project if you're just getting started animating things. Let's get into Photoshop and get started. <laughs> All right, getting started with a new document here. I'm gonna work at 1080 by 1080 pixels, kind of a standard square video resolution with a black background. And I'm gonna put a piece of text in here. This is a font called Castle Press number two. And what I wanna do with this type is apply a Gaussian blur to it. So yes, I do need to convert it to a smart object. That'll also keep the Gaussian blur live and adjustable. For now, I'll go with 20 pixels. Then let's create this spiral texture. I'm gonna create a new document just to build this texture. That's for one reason. I need to make it a specific size, 4,000 by 4,000 pixels, 8-bit, and this one will have a white background. Then I'm gonna start by hitting the D key to set my colors to default black and white. And in the filter menu, I'm gonna use the filter gallery. Then here in the sketch section, I'm gonna use the halftone pattern filter. I'll set the size to 10, the contrast all the way up at 50, and the pattern type to line. And that gives us this kind of headache-inducing striped pattern. I'm gonna make it even more headachey by applying in the blur section a motion blur with the angle at 90 degrees for a vertical blur and the distance at 20 pixels. So that's just enough to take those graphic black and white lines and make them smooth gradients back and forth between black and white. And in just a minute, we're gonna end up using the polar coordinates filter, which is gonna take these horizontal lines and warp them into a circle. But the challenge is how do we adjust this horizontal lines pattern just a little bit so that by the time this line wraps in a circle, it meets up with the next line and that one meets up with the next line to make one continuous line forming a spiral. What I'm gonna do is click this little lock on the layer to unlock it so it's not a background layer. And I can use Command or Control T to transform. And I'm gonna transform using two specific values. First, I'm gonna change this last value in the top of the transform options, the one labeled V, vertical skew. If this is cranked way up, you can see what that does. But I'm gonna set it to just 0.6 degrees. And that value pushes these lines up a little bit on one side and down a little bit on the other side, just enough so that the end of one line is in the same spot as the beginning of the next one here. Then one more thing while we're still in transform mode. If I zoom way in here, that skew value also had the effect of creating some transparency in the top right corner. What I wanna do is move the layer up just a little bit to close up that transparent gap. So I can either drag it up a little bit or I can put a specific value into the Y transform field, which ends up being 1979.06. And the transform actually has one more side effect. This layer now extends off the canvas and I need to crop out any of that extra information. What I'll do is hit return or enter to commit to the transform then Command or Control A to select all and Command or Control J to duplicate that selection to a new layer. Then I could just delete the bottom original layer. All right, then finally, filter, distort, polar coordinates. I want this set rectangular to polar and look at the spiral that's creating. All right, that's our spiral texture. I'm gonna rename this layer spiral. By the way, if you need a more graphic spiral, it doesn't have to have this little gradient built into it. You can put a solid color layer on top set to hard mix at a 90 fill value, which creates kind of a nice smooth threshold. And you can determine the thickness of the lines or even introduce a little bit of color just by changing the color of this solid layer. I don't need this layer now, but we will use that hard mix mode in a minute. Now, as you can imagine, we're gonna end up animating this spiral to rotate it in a circle. But because it's a little bit taller on the top than on the bottom, right now it would be a little wobbly if we rotated it. So before bringing this into the other composition, I'm gonna use Edit, Fill, and I'll use this to fill the background by setting the blending mode to Behind. It doesn't matter what the color is, white is fine. And that just makes it so the spiral now sits in the exact center of this entire layer. So now we can take this layer and drag it back onto the other document we created at the beginning, set it to hard mix blending mode. And that's basically using hard mix in the same way to create a threshold, but rather than just a solid color defining the thickness of the lines, it's the dark and light values from the blurry text underneath. And if I bring the fill value down just a little bit to 90%, 
It cleans up all that crunchy anti-aliasing, but keeps those nice distinct black and white values. So now we can dial this image in. At the moment, the white areas of the text are making the lines too thick, and the black background is so dark we're losing the spiral altogether. So I'm gonna do two things here. First, I'll create a gradient layer right on top of the text, but underneath the spiral. I'm gonna use just a regular black to white gradient, but I'll set the style to radial. Then I'm gonna blend this with the layers underneath it just by bringing back the opacity to 50%. Then over the gradient layer, I'm gonna create a levels adjustment layer. And the only thing I'm gonna do with this levels adjustment is change the black and white output values at the bottom, which basically just lowers the contrast of the image underneath the spiral. If I make it really low contrast, all we can see is the spiral, but maybe I'll find a balance with the black output at 20 and the white output at 240. All right, finally, let's give these lines a little bit more character, just a little bit of a distressed quality by dragging in a grungy texture. And I'm gonna put this texture underneath the spiral layer and set it to overlay mode. That's basically just introducing a little bit of chaos into those gray values underneath. And that translates to more grungy looking lines. It's a little sharp and crunchy. Generally, if I'm putting a texture underneath a hard mix layer or a threshold layer, I like to give it just a little bit of Gaussian blur maybe just one pixel to kind of round off the grungy, crunchy shapes. Because it's underneath this high contrast threshold effect, it doesn't appear blurry at all. It just eliminates all that little crunchy detail. And let's add one more bit of grungy paper texture on top of all these layers. Here's a blending mode that doesn't get used very often, but it works really well for high contrast black and white designs. The difference blending mode, it takes any areas of this layer that are white and inverts everything underneath them. I think it works kind of well here. Finally, I'm gonna make the whole image a little more faded, not quite so high contrast with a levels adjustment layer on top. I'm gonna to bring the black output level up to 27 for more of a faded black and limit the white output level to 218. So things never really go completely 100% white. All right, that's our piece of artwork. Let's animate it. And this will be an easy one to animate. All we need to do is rotate this spiral layer in a full circle and have that just repeat on a loop. We can make that happen pretty easily in Photoshop with just a few steps. I'm gonna open the timeline window and I wanna be sure this is set to create video timeline, not frame timeline. I'll hit create timeline and that gives us this little setup here. It looks a lot like the layers in the layers panel with the addition of this timeline. And if I open the dropdown on my spiral layer, there are these properties we can animate, position, opacity, and style. But how are we gonna animate rotation if there's no rotation or transform option here? Well, what I can do is select this layer in the layers panel, and before I do anything, this is an important step, I need to bring the fill value back up from 90% to 100%. Then I'm gonna right click and convert it to a smart object. Now in the timeline, that position value gets changed to transform. So that'll include rotation and scale and a lot more options than just position. And now I can also bring the fill value back down to 90%. If I would have converted it to a smart object at 90% fill, it would have baked that 90% into the smart object and that actually doesn't have quite the same effect. Now, before getting started with the animation here, I'm gonna make one change to the animation settings. Under the little three bar menu, I'm gonna go to set timeline frame rate and this definitely doesn't need to be 30 frames per second. I actually want this to have a slightly choppier kind of stop motion character, so I'm gonna set it to 12 frames per second. By default, this sets us up for a five second animation. I'm actually gonna do the entire animation over just the first two seconds, but we'll do the animating first and then trim down the timeline. If you're new to animating, this is a nice simple place to start. We're gonna rotate this layer in a circle using keyframes, which works like this. At the beginning of the timeline, I can click the little stopwatch icon next to the transform property. That creates a keyframe, which basically saves the transform properties, rotation, position, scale. Then I'm gonna move the playhead here to the two second mark in the timeline and use Command and Control T to transform this layer. And what I want is to rotate this layer 360 degrees, right, for a full circle. But here's the problem. Apparently I can only use values from negative 180 to 180. Luckily, negative 180 degrees to 180 degrees is 360 degrees, meaning if I put 180 in here, and that automatically gives me another keyframe at that two second mark. If I slide around the timeline, you can see Photoshop is automatically creating a smooth rotation between zero and 180 degrees. 
So now I need to go back to the start and actually transform the layer at the beginning to be negative 180 degrees. Okay, but that creates a new problem. Negative 180 and positive 180, well, Photoshop's just saying, hey, great, those are the same thing. I don't need to animate anything. Well, don't be a smart ass Photoshop. You know what I'm trying to do here. All right, what we need to do is go right to the middle of the timeline at exactly one second, use transform again to create another keyframe, and here's another confusing thing. The program actually defined a 180 degree rotation as a negative 100% scale on both the X and Y axis. Guess that was also easier than rotating it. So rotation is already zero here, but I need to set the scale values back to positive 100 and positive 100, which is the same as a zero degree rotation. Needlessly confusing, but that creates another keyframe. So now we've got negative 180 to zero, then zero to positive 180, making a full circle. So that's the animation, but we've obviously got all this dead space between two seconds and five seconds. As far as I could tell, the only way to change the length of the timeline is just to manually drag the end of each of these layers down to be two seconds long. And I wanna drag them down so that they end right at that two second mark in the timeline, meaning the animation won't actually include the frame that this keyframe is on. Since the end point and the start point are basically the same frame, we want the animation to loop back to the beginning right before it hits that keyframe. So with all these layers dragged to the right length, I can hit the little play button and that is looking like a nice smooth looping animation ready to export. Generally that would be done by going to the little menu here and using render video. Unfortunately here I'm running Photoshop 2021 version 22.3 and it doesn't work. The program just hangs on this initializing video export, but I'm gonna optimistically assume that render video will work just fine on your machine. I know from the Adobe forums, this is a problem they're trying to sort out. If you do run into this problem, the workaround I've been using is to save this PSD, then drag it into media encoder if you've got that, which then has no problem rendering the PSD. And there's our looping video. That wraps it up. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please do hit the like button and be sure to check out the Texture Labs channel for more content. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.